Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Digital Classroom. And Digital Classroom is made possible by BenQ and Rogue. Today, a topic that, well, gets asked a lot. How about calibration and how about, well, how to do it? I don't want to go very much in depth of calibration. I want to keep it simple. You have certain color spaces. For example, sRGB, that's a small color space. Adobe RGB, that's a bigger color space. And Pro Photo RGB, that's a huge color space. But you also have something that your camera captures. And well, we don't know what color space that is. We call that raw. And the raw color space has certain coordinations for red, green and blue. But Adobe RGB has other coordinations and also sRGB. So it's very, very confusing if you try to understand it. My advice, don't try to understand it. Just remember that every color space like sRGB and Adobe RGB has fixed points and your raw files the only thing you have to do is make sure that those coordinates are the same as Adobe RGB. Do you have to do that yourself? No. No, you don't have to do that. There are tools for that. Now, when you buy a monitor and you're on a budget, you probably buy a cheap monitor, right? And most monitors that are cheap don't have a big color space. They have a small color space. If you have a little bit more money, go for an Adobe RGB monitor. I personally love the BenQ monitors. Now, those bigger color space monitors, they will show you the colors more vibrant, more saturated, and they give you more that sense of really what happened when you took the shot. So how do you calibrate those things? Well, it's very simple. Most monitors support so-called hardware calibration, and this for me is a big pro, because that means that you actually calibrate the monitor straight into the hardware, so you don't need software calibration. If you have a monitor that doesn't support any hardware calibration, don't worry, there's also software calibration, but they're a little bit less, le less sophisticated. It, it, you don't really see it, but when you look at gradients, they're just a little bit better on the hardware calibrated monitors. So what do you need to calibrate your monitor? It's actually pretty simple. You need some very simple tools. For example, you need something like this. This is a color analyzer. Now this is called a tree stimulus meter. It works with gels and filters. And nowadays they even use glass filters, so they are a little bit more, well, resistance against degradation of the colors. If you want to do it really good and you have a little bit more on budget, get one of these. This is a spectrometer. It doesn't meter certain areas, it just meters the whole spectrum. So these are a little bit more accurate, especially if your monitor is meh. So if red isn't really red, but a little bit more towards orange, these can correct it a little bit better. Okay, so what software do you use? My advice, use the software that is delivered with your analyzer. So if you use the X-Rite products, which I highly recommend, use their software. But if you have a monitor that has hardware calibration on board, like the BenQ, use the software that is delivered with your monitor. So in my case, that's Palette Master. Now there are three things that are really important to set up in your software and everything else is just automatic. The first thing, make sure that you set your monitor on the color temperature of 6500 degrees Kelvin, also sometimes called 65D or 65K. The second one is the gamma. Make sure for photography you put it on 2.2. And the third one is the light output. You don't want to burn your retinas, but you also don't want your monitor to be too dim. So make sure you set it anywhere between 120 and 130 CDM. After that, you just press go and everything will go automatically. Now there are some questions from people that go like, Frank, I did my calibration and I really don't like to look. There's a red cast or a brown cast. And that can happen sometimes because you're actually calibrating your monitor with already a profile active. What you can do is on the x right site, you can actually download a zero profile. You just put it in your monitor and then you calibrate. But if, if you go like Frank, that's, I, I don't know where you're going, there's an easier way. Just do your calibration and right after the calibration, do it again. Because the second time, it will actually reset itself and you have the perfect calibration. Only do this when you don't trust the output. 
And in all honesty, it's more a problem of the past. Nowadays, the software works pretty good. But if you see like, okay, this is clearly not right, it's too red or too brown, just do the same calibration again and it will work like a charm. The other thing is, should I calibrate with the lights on? Yeah, well, there are calibration tools that actually have a light sensor. That means that it will take into account the available light. If you're in a controlled area, meaning you always have exactly the same light set up, feel free to do the calibration with that light sensor. Personally, I think there should be no light hitting your monitor because, well, seeing shadow detail can be a little bit tricky when you have light falling on your monitor. That's why, for example, the BenQs and the other high brands actually have something called shades. Those are really important because they actually block off excessive light hitting your screen. So, my personal advice, don't use the light sensor, but make sure you have a controlled lighting area where there's no light hitting your monitor. How often should you do the calibration? My advice, every time before an important assignment. And otherwise, just do it every three or four weeks. Final question, do I need to replace my analyzer? Yes. Now, there's a lot of controversy about this topic. The older analyzers you had to replace after one year or one year and a half because they literally degraded. The newer ones, they have glass gels and, or glass filters, sorry. And those, well, they will run a little bit longer. But I still advise you guys to once every two or three years, just, let me put it this way, check your analyzer. So if a friend of yours has a new analyzer, just check if they're still okay. Now, for the high-end analyzers, you can actually send them in to, for example, X-Rite and have them recalibrated or rechecked. It's not cheap, but you know for sure that you actually run the perfect calibration. Oh, and one final, final question. D why do I calibrate when all my clients look at uncalibrated monitors? The answer is incredibly simple. If you are used to seeing blue in a certain hue or saturation, you're used to that. For you, that's the correct blue. Think about somebody who's colorblind. They're always used to seeing green, for example, as brown. Now, as soon as they start seeing green as, let's say, magenta, they know something is wrong. So, taking into account that most professional photographers, I hope, will calibrate their monitor, the client is used to seeing a certain look on that wrong monitor. If you don't calibrate your monitor, your images will look different than all the other ones. So, although the client has an uncalibrated monitor, make sure you calibrate your monitor. There's no excuse for inaccurate colors, especially nowadays. Everything is automated, everything is simple. Hey guys, if you like what we do, subscribe to our channel, leave comments below and smash that like button because we really like that. For now, I'm signing off and see you again in the next episode of Digital Classroom, made possible by BenQ and Rogue.